Get the bitty. Hi. Cảm ơn nhá. Vâng, không có gì em. Cảm ơn chị nhá. Ừ. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Ngày quá xấu hổ. Wonderful Daoban province. It includes many touristic destinations such as the popular Bangzok waterfall, Gadzai Mountain, and Pakbo Cave. You will be able to explore them with me in my other videos, but in this one we'll explore the best route from Baolak town in Kaobang province to Bakkan city in Bakkan province. This video is not only about the best route, but it also includes the story of my most favorite selfie, taken at a big tin mine with a long history here in Kaobang province, which is also the logo of my channel. Well, this was the sixth day of my annual 2000 km Tet trip. Tet, or the Vietnamese Lunar New Year, is the biggest holiday in Vietnam. After exploring Hazang province on the previous days of this trip, and do watch those three detailed videos about Hazang, we got to Baolak town in Kaoban province on the fifth day. On the sixth, early in the morning, we started heading to Bakkan province. In Bakkan province, perhaps the biggest attraction is the Babe Lake which is the largest natural freshwater lake in Vietnam. Please subscribe to see some great videos about all these off-the-beaten-path locations in Cao Bang and Bac Can provinces in the near future. So, Cao Bang and Bac Can provinces are both located in the northern part of Vietnam next to each other. But which route from Bao Lac Town in Cao Bang to Bac Can is the best? If you are in Bao Lac Town, open maps and type in Bac Can City. You'll get two main routes. The main one includes the following roads. QL34, DT212, QL279 and finally QL3. It may sound like switching between many roads, but it's not. You'll feel it's one long road, because they are all main roads and Bakkan is a provincial capital. And so you'll have signs telling you which way to go. I didn't even use maps on the way. The other route? which my two friends eventually chose, is pretty intense. The quality of the road is not always great. Sometimes you might have to go through mud. Sometimes it's dusty, it's narrow. You might have to be prepared for some off-road experiences. So basically, it depends on what you want. And consider your bike too. Can your bike do it? Also, get enough petrol either route you choose, but especially the more off-road one. The regular one is about 170 kilometers long. The road my friends took is only 148 kilometers long. If you want the adrenaline route, you need to remember this shop, Dai Li Huan Quing. because it's exactly here that you have to make a 180 degree right turn coming from Baolak town. So if you're in Baolak, just put in Dai Li Huan Quing and it will show you about 30 kilometers right to this junction.
And this was the last spot I saw my two friends that day. For about five or six hours, we reunited in Bacca, of course. If you want winding roads but asphalt, take the route I took. I actually recently did the other route and I'll make a video about that one too. Just stay tuned. Now back to Kaobang province where we are right now. Here are some aspects about it. Kaobang is renowned for its amazing natural landscapes, characterized by karst mountains, deep valleys, and lush forests. The province is home to Banzok Waterfall, one of the largest and most beautiful waterfalls in Southeast Asia. It is a tiered waterfall with a height of over 30 meters. It is currently the fourth largest waterfall along the national border in the world after Iguazu Falls, Victoria Falls and Niagara Falls. The surrounding area is very picturesque as the whole province is. The province is inhabited by several ethnic minority groups, including the Tai, Nong, Zhao, and Hmong. Each group has its own distinct culture, traditions, and languages. Visitors to Kaobang have the opportunity to explore ethnic minority villages, witness traditional lifestyles, and participate in cultural activities. Kaobang has a rich history intertwined with Vietnam's struggle for independence. It was a significant area during the Vietnam War. Historical sites such as Pak Bo Cave, where President Ho Chi Minh lived and worked, attract visitors interested in Vietnam's history. Kaobang province can be accessed from Hanoi by road via QL3 or National Road Number 3. The journey takes approximately 6 to 7 hours by car or bus and a little longer by motorbike given that the speed limit for motorbike is never higher than 60 km an hour. The provincial capital, Kaobang City, serves as a hub for exploring the province and accessing nearby attractions. Another main highway here in Kaobang province is QL34 or National Road Number 34, which is the road we are on right now. Traveling along this route provides numerous opportunities for scenic photography. There are designated viewpoints and rest areas where travelers can stop to capture the beauty of the surrounding landscapes. The province offers scenic views of rural landscapes including mountains, valleys and occasional glimpses of local life and agriculture. Motorcycling around Kaobang province during Tet can be both rewarding and challenging. 
While main highways like this QL34 are generally well maintained, some rural roads may not be in such a good condition. Be prepared for muddy or slippery surfaces, especially if you take the route my two friends took. If it's dead, it means it's probably cold in Kaobang. Check the weather forecast and pack accordingly with warm clothing and rain gear. Tet is a significant cultural holiday in Vietnam, marked by celebrations and closures of businesses and attractions. Fill your tank and keep an eye on it, because you may find it difficult to find gas here during Tet. You may encounter communal celebrations in villages or towns, Participate respectfully if invited. However, remember not to drink and drive. You can refuse politely. Not only is it morally wrong, but it is also illegal. Vietnam has a 0% alcohol law when it comes to drinking and driving. And finally, the story of my favorite selfie. About 65 kilometers from Bao Lak town is the Ting Tuk Tin Mine. Ting Tuk Tin Mine is an open pit mine that began operating in the late 19th century. In 1902, this mine was owned by the French. After the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in 1954, Vietnam gained independence and the Ting Tuk Tin Mine was established in 1955 and became the most modern factory in Southeast Asia at that time. Here there is a big statue of President Ho Chi Minh, the founding father of modern Vietnam and the key figure in the country's history. As can be found in various locations across Vietnam, particularly in towns, cities, historical sites and public areas. These statues serve as symbols of national pride and remembrance of Ho Chi Minh's contributions to Vietnam's independence and development. I've personally read a lot about Ho Chi Minh or Uncle Ho as he is commonly called around here since a very young age and have huge respect for him. Out of this respect I painted a portrait of him about 20 years ago. So on this trip, after shivering non-stop from riding at 5 to 7 degrees Celsius, with my fingers almost frozen, when I got to this tin mine and saw his statue, it basically made my day. It did. I knew it was the perfect place to take a selfie. I didn't prepare much. I just got my phone out, positioned the bike somewhere on the right, made sure I got Uncle Ho in the background and snap. I think I got a great shot and it became the logo of my channel. And I think it's perfect. I hope you enjoy my video and please subscribe, like or share or all three to enjoy other videos in the future and also to support me and I thank you for that. Next Friday we are heading to central Vietnam and the pristine, gorgeous and mysterious Ho Chi Minh Road West. Till then, ride safe. <laughs>